All right, so I'm gonna do this um, 433 megahertz transmitter board. I'm gonna use this stencil that came with it. I decided to get a stencil for this board because I was laying out components here at the end and for what I wanted it to do, I ended up laying out 20 in a row there, at least there, so I figured uh, probably save some time and effort with the stencil on this one instead of uh, applying solder paste to each individual pad. Bad enough just uh, laying the components out, but so anyways, we're gonna set up um, the stencil. I keep I keep spare boards. I keep spare boards on hand usually like this, so I can just lay them out pretty easily on just something like that. So let me lay this out and let's get going. All right, so I think we're pretty much ready for setup. We have our boards laid out here. We have. Bunch of through hole parts and some other larger SMD parts ready. We have uh, appropriate reading materials. Very interesting stuff. Make sure you have all your parts accounted for. We're going to be using some of this um, cheap mechanics uh, solder paste. Works. Uh, I've used it once already. Works pretty well. Um, the stencil is not going to hit everything. It's not going to hit some of these um, through holes that I used for the uh, USB connector. So we're just going to use our trusty uh, MG chemicals uh, paste on that one. These tips are very useful, very tiny. You get this under the microscope, you know, you can apply this exactly where you want to, almost surgically. Maybe I'll do a shot of that as well. Um, even if you don't have a stencil, using something like this, you can get the solder paste exactly where you want it, um, down to a very fine pitch pad as well. So let's set up and uh, just go through my, the process I use. Um, works pretty well. Okay, so one additional thing I forgot to mention that's actually very useful is lately I've been I like to have a bomb ready, so. Um, I don't forget that I need, you know, say, 10Ks, that, you know, I put 10Ks, you know, because I usually print something like this out so I know where everything goes, but then you don't want to miss something, so you want to make sure when you get your 10Ks out, you put them all on, and you don't have to come back later and put a couple on that you missed. So I like going down uh, the bomb, and um, I arrange this in a way that I, that I like, um, generally higher component counts to lower, but also just component types. So I have maybe all the resistors, the SMD resistors, and the capacitors, then the larger stuff. So um, might want to try something like that. Also another important step is to clean your board. You don't want any greasy fingerprints on here disrupting anything. So we give this a nice clean down with just some uh, moonshine. And then let's see, let's uh, see if we can get this stencil on here. Yeah, we use this tape it came with just because. And um, I'm right handed, I, I'm gonna wanna see go this way. Last time I did it the wrong way twice, or once at least. So we situate this where it needs to be, line it all up. I'm gonna tape it. I don't know if you, you don't really have to tape it. I've seen people um, just, uh, look at that, that looks pretty good already. I think we're gonna go with that. doesn't have to be exact. It's pretty exact. The more exact the better, but it doesn't have to be really right on there. So, all right. Let's um, apply some solder paste to the putty knife or whatever you want to call it. All right, hopefully this is, um, warmed up a little bit for consistency's sake. Looks 
looks like it's okay. So I usually apply it to the knife. Oops. Kind of like this. So we get a nice coat of it. Okay, that's not perfect, but it may work just fine. So first we want to put a nice uh, thick layer on just to enforce it in all the holes. That's what she said. Um, so I'm just gonna start like that, apply some good pressure and just put it on like that. And then this time we're just gonna take it all off and maybe do one more time. No, that's good. Um, this is space here, so it, it bent it and put it in, but that looks good. Let's um, hold this end here and hold this end up. And that looks uh, really good actually. So next thing, have to clean all this up. So it remains, this remains in a reusable state because I'm gonna try to reuse this. I'm just gonna clean this up here. So I'm gonna get this cleaned up. We'll take a look at the paste on the board and uh, we'll start placing components. All right, we are ready for the uh, hot air process. Let's move this to a better angle. So, this is obviously a fairly easy part. Well, we'll see how easy it is um, if uh, you're filming it. Probably not as easy. Usually I just like to have uh, my tweezers and my hot air. And then kind of keep the air and uh, the hot air at a distance at first, just kind of heat the board up. It's in this metal vise, so it's gonna take a while. I tried putting some captain tape on the um, button because I've had a little bit of melting on the button. They still always still work fine, but um, just wanted to be careful and see if I could find a way to avoid that. I touched, I accidentally touched some of the paste down near the uh, USB connector, unfortunately, but uh, seems okay. Just able to pile a little bit more and clean up the area. So I'm going to be shooting for these row of 20 components at the back first. Just like to heat this thing up evenly possible. Alright, that's probably good. Let's focus on these guys. Alright, it's starting to flow. Okay. I don't know if you can see that, but back row is flowed. You know what, I actually like to hold this in my left hand so I can, oh, so I can uh, make adjustments with my other hand if I need to. This 10K that wants to uh, walk around. It's hot. And then we'll just start to work at the rest of the components. I'm not really liking that 10K, it doesn't want to adhere. The uh, solder, the flux in this solder paste is 
not the best. The MG chemical stuff is better. But this stuff is pretty cheap. I tried something a little bit better, but ended up getting, uh, from SRA, ended up getting something that was completely solidified, so they refunded me, but I had to go with this. Okay, we got the button starting to go there. Got to work to this side. These components over here. Alright. Get this inductor going. There we go. Try to get these capacitors, but you really end up melting some of the plastic on these capacitors. I'll probably just touch it up with the iron because I don't really want to spend too long on that. There we go. This looks a little off. Oh, just hadn't flowed properly. And then the um, USB connection takes a little bit longer. It's a big hunk of metal, but I think everything looks like everything is flowed now. So we can just visually inspect and do, touch up with the soldering iron if we need to. All right, so we're all assembled. Everything. Uh, Okay, we got to clean up that smudge there. Um, a couple things didn't flow right, like this uh, 10K here. But uh, we flowed that. Did the capacitors by hand. It's, oddly enough, I usually end up reflowing all the pins on the chip, but this looked really good. So overall, it turned out pretty well. Next thing to do will be to. Um, test and see how well this uh, uh, step up converter, this boost converter will work. Um, I'm supposed to get uh, 12 volts out from 5 volts in here and um, hopefully that'll work as planned if that if it seems nice and clean. Um, after that we'll put on one of these uh, transmitter, 433 megahertz transmitter modules. Um, I think I had actually planned for it to go like this, but that's not going to work. We're going to have to mount it uh, the other way like this, which is fine. Um, there's clearance at least, luckily. So, um, the button, I put the cap on tape on. It works fine, but uh, it did melt a little bit there, and that's generally what I've seen happen. Uh, so I'll have to try something else, or or just do it by hand, really. But since you have solder paste on there, you're liable to melt that with the hot air. So you really just kind of have to either clean the paste off and do it later or try to avoid this. But then if you have stuff close to that, well, that's going to be an issue. So what we'll do is we'll test this out, see, if, um, see how the 12 volts is. Um, it's enabled or disabled by the chip here. That's actually what I planned for this button to be is 12 volts on or off. And uh, if this isn't regulating, we'll just get five volts here. So we'll be a low power transmitter or, you know, if we need more power, we'll be able to step up to the uh, 12 volts. So, and didn't have to populate all these inputs. This again will be for um, replacing something I have in my garage right now, where um, each one of these will be uh, like a, a door switch or something like that um, to tell me if the door is open or closed and then uh, it'll relay back the information via 433 megahertz transmitter. I just redid the um, receiver module recently. Pretty simple little small thing. Maybe I'll do something on that too um, if I can get this working right. So uh, thanks for watching.